Hello and welcome to my channel. If you are new, my name is Haley, and this week it's Mitochondrial Awareness Week. Clearly, I just hit my lamp. Oops. Today's video is going to be explaining what exactly mitochondrial disease is, and there's a really exciting announcement, which is I'm going to be posting five videos this week for Mitochondrial Disease Awareness Week which is September 17th to, I believe, the 24th. And I'm really excited. I have some really fun videos that I'm excited to put out relating to mitochondrial disease. And I realize I haven't had a dedic- I don't have a dedicated video explaining what exactly it is. So I thought this would be the perfect first video of the week. I'm going to explain it the best way I can, the easiest way to understand it because it is a very complex condition. So if you didn't know, everybody has mitochondria energy in their cells. And what mitochondria energy accounts for is about 90% of all body functions. Basically it helps keep your organs working, your breathing, um, basically all your vitals up, your whole body. It accounts for 90% of that. And so when mitochondrial malfunctions or you don't have enough mitochondrial energy like you need in your cells around your body, organs actually start to fail. You can get very sick and you can even die depending on the severity of it. So a way that I really like explaining to people is basically if you picture a cell phone at 15%, no matter how much you charge it, no matter how much you try to fix it, no matter what you do, it stays at 15% and when you use it, it goes down even more. And that's basically my body. It's basically like running a full house on a single battery. So as you can tell just from the explanation, it's very serious. It's not something to ever be taken lightly. However, like any condition, you can have it mildly or you can have it severely or moderately. I'm moderately affected. I haven't gone to the severe point, but I'm not mild. Um, it really has taken over my life. Like that's the truth of mitochondrial disease or any chronic illness for that matter, it takes over your life and kind of limits you to what you can do. But I do want to mention, because your mitochondria energy malfunctions in your cells around your body, you tend to have a lot of other conditions as well. I have about 10 other conditions outside of mitochondrial disease, and it is because of mitochondrial disease. So like I said, there are actually quite a few different types of mitochondrial disease. I do not fall under any of those categories. I got genetic testing a few years ago and they discovered that some of the genes, either the, one of my genes or mutations I have, um, nobody else has tested for in the world um, as of 2013. So we haven't gotten it tested since then. But my mom also has that gene because mitochondrial disease is actually genetic. So my mom passed it down to me. My grandma passed it down to my mom, my grandma's mom passed it down to my grandma, and so on. So the mom can pass it on to any of her children, boy or girl, and the dad cannot pass it to any of his children if he has mitochondrial disease. And it varies from person to person. Not one person is the exact same, not one person has the exact same symptoms and the same experience, and you can be affected mildly, moderately, or severely. I follow under the more moderately category. Some of the symptoms of mitochondrial disease alone are developmental delays. It can lead to dementia, neuropsychiatric disturbances, weakness, neuropathic pain, fainting, dysautonomia, which is the failure of your autonomic nervous system. So like everything important, like your heart rate, your blood pressure, your blood sugar, all of that type of stuff. You're breathing. Um, absent reflexes and temperature instability, which I have. Weakness in your muscles, cramping in your muscles, gastrointestinal problems, such as gastroparesis, gut dysmotility, irritable bowel syndrome, which I have all of those. Pseudo, uh, pseudo obstruction, I think that's how you pronounce it. Kidneys is renal tubular acidosis or wasting. Heart cardiac conduction defects, heart, also known as heart blocks cardiomyopathy, hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar, visual loss and blindness, hearing loss, optic atrophy, deafness, um, diabetes, exer exocrine pancreatic failure, parathyroid failure, failure to gain weight, fatigue, unexplained vomiting, short stature, respiratory problems. Um, I'm pretty sure I def mentioned developmental delays. Also, exercise intolerance. Um, seizures, 
as the list of symptoms goes on and on and on even more and more people keep dying, more people keep getting misdiagnosed, more people are called hypochondriacs when they're not and nobody gives them an answer and they just lose all hope. There's no cure. Yes, there are medications, but those aren't cures. Those are just taming the symptoms of the moment and medications don't always work. There's different types of IV fluids and high amino acids to try and help you to slow down the progression, to help tame your symptoms, to help you have a quality life. But there's no cure. It is torture. It's, you're trapped inside a body 24 seven. You can't just go out normal places. You can't just walk around. You have to be in a wheelchair. You can't just absorb food. You have to be on TPN or feeding or have a feeding tube. You can't l really have a quality life without being on fluids 24 seven. You need a porter cath to get fluids. You need to central line to have fluids. You need a pick line to have fluids. You get infections here and there everywhere. Your immune system is super, super compromised and it's so sensitive. The smallest cold can send your body into a full on flare up of mitochondrial disease. For a lot of people, it gets to the point where you're so severe that your doctors say they don't know what to do with you, they don't have any plan, they don't have any ideas of what to do, you're already on the maximum doses of all your medications, you're already on all the fluids that you could possibly be on, and they just tell you there's no hope. Because there's not a cure, and people are dying every day because it's not taken seriously, or they're misdiagnosed, or they don't even know what the heck it is. And that to me is terrifying and so sad because it is one crappy disease. I want this message to get across, and I really, really want to raise awareness. Not just for me and my experience, but for all the Mita Warriors. No matter how hard we try, no matter how hard we research and go to doctor after doctor, they all say they can't help when you get to a certain point. And that is why mitochondrial disease needs to be known way more than it is today. I really hope that you found this video interesting and I really hope you were more aware and I would love it if you shared this video to raise awareness for mitochondrial disease. Please raise awareness in your own life about mitochondrial disease even if you don't have it, even if somebody around you doesn't have it or does. Please raise awareness because it's some because it is something that is unfortunately more and more and more prevalent. So again, please share this video and like this video, subscribe, and make sure you come back tomorrow for the next video. And I will see you all in my next video.